Hey guys, we're here with our casting instructor, Gene Gebert. Uh, we just hit the beach with the new Sage Igniter. Uh, the Sage Igniter is the method successor, so it falls into the newest member of that ultra technical, ultra fast bloodline that started with the TCR, went to the TCX, went to the method, which had a cult like following down here, uh, and now we have the Igniter. So, Gene, what'd you think about the Igniter? So, we had a really enjoyable session out on the beach. Uh, I paired the igniter with uh, my uh, Lamson. Which balanced it very well. Yeah, yeah, Micro 5. And uh, a Rio Bonefish line. Uh, we, did, we have the seven weight igniter here. Uh, and we uh, performed a bunch of distance casts, both with a straight line uh, kind of cast and also with some oval casts. And I was really impressed with a number of features of the igniter. So the, the line we used, that bonefish line, has a very long taper. And I believe that it aerialized line very nicely. Uh, it was able to make presentations very nicely as well as you can feel um, a nice soft presentation with it. I believe that it would be a line, like the new direct core bonefish, a line similar to that would be good for this rod for uh, Bahamas guys. Mm -hmm. uh, with a seven weight, whereas around Biscayne Bay or fish in the backcountry, you'd be better off with a heavier line uh, like the Flats Pro or the Bonefish Quick Shooter. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I would agree with that. The fly line was matched for the rod, but it still felt light. Yeah, yeah. So that's something you liked, how light the rod was. Yes, very much. I like the, the feeling uh, of lightness plus the, the feeling that uh, I can perceive the bending of the rod as I'm going through through the cast. I, I feel like I'm steering my my fly line directly to the target. It's really an enjoyable feeling. Right, a feeling. And that's something that was improved from the method. Yes, yes. Yeah. So we have more feel now. Um, but we still have that power, that technical aspect, like the method had, where you have to have fast hands for this rod. You have to make a long haul to really appreciate the rod. Yes, I agree. Uh, long hauls are, were called for today under the conditions we were casting. And, right. They they, uh, they they went very, very well with the casting stroke. It mm. was quite quite enjoyable. Right, right. So talking about holes, you showed me this tip, which I very, very much appreciate. Uh, this was a problem with the old method as well, where I felt on short shots, it was hard to get the line out of the, if I didn't have all of the head out of the tip, that it would lock up. And even trying to aerialize 40 feet of line, there'd be a, a point where it would lock up. Um, so you showed me this tip that's greatly, greatly compared, matched with this rod, greatly improved that for me. Let's talk about that. Right. So the, the tip uh, applies to uh, people who are casting fairly long distances in hot, humid conditions, mm -hmm. uh, typical of, of, of where we live. And that's what it is, was a combination of the rod action and the friction, which I didn't realize was friction was such a big part of it. Yes, and what and what you experience and what other casters experience with other rods and, and lines are that when they're finishing their forward cast and they're finishing the pull uh, with their, le their, their left hand, uh, they feel a sudden jamming. Exactly. Uh, and they think they've done something terribly wrong when really it's, it's due to the environmental conditions mm -hmm. and their effects on the combination of the rod and line. So to get rid of, uh, of that jam, uh, you would take the final piece of your, of your rod and rotate it about 90 degrees out from you, uh, and that usually takes care of the problem by itself. And I saw a big uh, increase in shootability, the word. Uh, I saw a big ease of, of being able to shoot line by doing that, right. eliminating that jam. Uh, another thing with this rod is the grip. So I changed from holding up here to down here, and I feel like I was able to use more of the rod's power because now you have uh, a rod with more feel, right? Mm -hmm. So now you can use more of the rod, and I, I believe my grip with this rod gave it even more power. How would you? Yeah, you've uh, taken advantage of the lightness of the rod to lengthen it effectively by by holding it lower down, mm -hmm. and you can you can do that comfortably because you don't have a substantial weight. To, to pull in each direction. Right, it makes sense. And I have, I have felt more control like that and, and more power like that. So let's talk about the loops. What do you think? This uh, this rod is, it makes it easy to make tight loops. 
because of its uh, its stiffness and its uh, fast recovery time, uh, it, it can generate much tighter loops with, with less, uh, less rebound motion happening that would ordinarily open the loop. So you, you get pretty loops with this slot, with, yeah. this, with this rod. That makes sense. See, uh, growing up down here, learning to fish down here, I never really paid attention to loops. I never really cared about loops. As long as you got the fly to the fish, you did well. Um, we had a stiff east wind mm -hmm. uh, today on the beach, and uh, it was backhanded very well. But that front hand, I really realized that while the wind was blowing into me, I was able to keep the fly out far enough and drive it right to the target, which would be an effect of the loop. Of the tight loop. Of the rod, uh -huh. too. Yes. Uh -huh. Makes sense. Uh, so you travel all over the world. Where would you take this rod? Would you take this rod? Oh, I would gladly take this rod to, uh, for example, the seven weight version of this would be a wonderful rod to take on a, on a bone fishing trip to the Bahamas or elsewhere. I mean, it would, it would be a real joy to, to cast the, uh, the, light, the light line, the yeah. relatively light line, yeah. with, with the increased power to get it to the fish. Yeah. And the feel that you know. And the feel. Yeah. Uh, X mount permit. Because yeah. I believe it would, this rod would do very well with heavier bugs as well. So it would uh, be casting off uh, for permit off a boat in Australia, and there I would choose a, a slightly heavier rod, uh, maybe an eight weight or nine weight, really. Right. Right. And uh, expect to be able to direct uh, direct my my crab flies accurately to the permit. Gotcha. Perfect. Um, well, thank you, Gene. So Sage Igniter, technical, fast. Uh, with more feel, available at Old Florida Fly Shop, free shipping on all orders if you feel like this rod is for you.